Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and today in our home links, we are going to be uh, approaching some multiplication problems using the lattice method. Now, lattice is the third of the three methods that we learned in Unit Four on how to approach multi-digit multiplication. So the instructions simply read: use the lattice method to find the products. So in problem number one, I'm going to take the, the uh, problem eight times sixty-seven, and then I'm going to what? You don't know what the lattice method is? Didn't you watch my video on the math journal assignment from lesson 13 on it? It was both highly informative and vastly entertaining. You didn't? Well, I guess I have to wait until you watch that video before I can proceed. So you go off, watch that video, and then come back when you're ready. I'll be waiting here until you do. Oh good, you're back. Now I can continue. So like I was saying, I'm going to take 8 times 67, and I'm just going to place the 8 to the right of this uh, rectangle, and I'm going to put the 67, which is 6 tens and 7 ones, on top. And then I'm going to do my calculations just dealing with the single digits within each place value. So I'm going to multiply 7 times 8, and that's going to give me 56. And the 5 and 56 stands for 10s. And then I'm going to multiply 8 times 6. That's going to give me 48. But this time, the 8 right here, that's a value of 10. And the 4 over here, those are 100s. So when I then add my digits together um, along these uh, diagonal columns, like so, I'm going to bring down my 6. That's my 1s. 8 tens plus 5 tens is going to give me 13 tens, so I leave the 3 tens in the tens column, and then I'm going to add my 100 right there. 100 plus 400 then gives me 500. So my total, or my total product, is 536. What do you mean you don't believe me? Well, here, let me show you another way of approaching it. So if I were to do the partial product, Approach, 67 times 8, like so. I would set up my problem 60 times 8, then 7 times 8. And of course, 6 times 8 is going to give me 48, so that gives me 48 tens when I add my extra 0. And then 7 times 8 is 56. And of course, when I add those two parts together, what do you know? I get 536. So essentially what I'm doing here in lattice is the same thing I did in partial products. When I multiply the 6 over here, that's 6 tens, like over here. All I'm doing is that I'm keeping track that the 6 in front of the 7 right here is in the tens place value. I'm not including the 0, I'm just remembering that there would be a 0 involved, or that that 6 is 60, 6 tens. And so the calculations I do when I multiply 6 times 8 is that I'm multiplying 6 tens times 8. It's just a, a visual shorthand uh, that helps you skip this step over here. You're still going to be doing the, the multiplication part. You just, when you're adding the digits, there's not the zeros involved. Okay? Let's try one more. And actually, let's try one that involves... Uh, two multi-digit numbers, 44 times 58. So I would write 44 on the top here, and then I would write 58 on the side here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle either one column at a time or one row at a time. And again, the order does not affect the outcome. So I could do it this way and multiply all the digits in the first row with the 5, like this. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20 again. And then I would multiply the two 4s, the 4 10s, the 4 1s, by my 8. 4 times 8 is 32. And 4 times 8, once again, is 32. And then I would go ahead and I would add all those uh, digits in each of my uh, uh, diagonal columns. So bring down the 2, 
0 plus 3 plus 2 gives me 5. 2 plus 0 plus 3 gives me 5 as well. And then when I bring down this 2, that makes my total 2,552. So let me write that up here at the top. 2,552. Now, I can approach this problem again using lattice the same way, only starting from a different uh, approach, using the columns versus the rows. So let's draw a lattice box. It's going to look like I'm doing partitioning rectangles, except I'm going to create these diagonal lines to help us sort. And then once again, I'm going to multiply 44 times 58. Now, instead of going one row at a time, let's do it one column at a time, like this. So 4 times 5 would give me 20. 4 times 8 would give me 30. Two. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to multiply the 5 times this 4 and then the 8 times this 4. So 4 times 5 again is 20. 4 times 8 again is 32. And then once I bring down all the numbers and do all the addition, my total once again is the same as it was before, 2,552. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. Lattice is just another way to visually organize the information. It just um, banks on the idea that you will remember that this 4 right here is 4 tens versus this 4 in the 1's place value represents 4 1's. Okay? All three, or any of the three methods that we've learned about in Unit 4, are valid approaches to multiplication. Okay? Uh, at this point, you now have three tools in your toolbox. And when it comes to solving a problem, like say 183 times 5, you can use whatever process you want. It's up to you. Unless you are being specifically asked to demonstrate you know how to do a problem using this method, when you're just saying, when you're just told, solve this problem, it's a dealer's choice. So you could approach this problem using partitioned rectangles, like so. Take 183, break it down into its parts, and multiply each part. I could take 183 and multiply it using partial products, which again, takes all the parts and multiplies them by the, the common factor of 5. And then you would just add all those partial products together to get your total. Or, like we've been shown right here, I could use a lattice. 183 times 5, and I just have to remember all those crazy diagonal lines, like so. And I just do all my calculations this way. Again, any method works. So as long as you're not being asked specifically to demonstrate a particular method, it's up to you on how to approach the problem. And that's our job as math teachers, is to empower students to solve problems in the way that makes the most sense to them. Okay? So if you have questions on lattice or any approach to multiplication, or if this whole uh, multi-digit multiplication thing still mystifies you, you need to talk to your math teachers. They will be happy to uh, set you straight and help you out and work through each and every approach if you still don't understand them. And I would do so now because we're on lesson 13, which means this is the last lesson of this unit. And you know what happens after the last lesson in a unit. You have the unit test. So I would not be surprised if in the next couple of days you don't have a unit test uh, waiting for you uh, in math. So ask those questions now. During the test is not the time to ask the questions. Okay? Uh, well, friends, I hope you've learned a lot from this video and all the videos that have come before it. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again 
when we uh, approach Unit 5, which will be in the second semester of your fourth grade year, which means you will be that much closer to becoming a fifth grader. Okay? Uh, until we talk again, have a good day. Thanks.